Hi, I'm Don Dawson. One size does not fit all, and sometimes that's a real pain in the neck and other places. Just imagine how convenient it would be if one size did fit all. For one thing, the places where we work and the things we work with, our desks, chairs, computers, and other tools that we use could be designed to work well for everybody. In truth, we're all different. So efficiency, comfort, and safety in the office can often be hard to come by. But it can be done using ergonomics. Ergonomics is the study of how the things we use can fit us better so that we can work with them efficiently, comfortably, and safely. It's more than just a matter of convenience, especially when applied to our workplaces. When the things we work with don't fit us well, the results can be serious, involving pain, injury, lost productivity, and lost wages. To understand how we can prevent this, Let's start by looking at just how we can be hurt by a workplace that doesn't work for us. Office work would seem to be about as safe a job as you could find. But many of the millions of people who work in offices every day have found that it can be a painful experience. The potential for suffering and injury in the office is rooted in how we perform our everyday activities. Repetitive movements, such as when we're typing on a computer keyboard, can cause significant damage over time. Awkward body positions, such as we might get into if our workstation doesn't really fit us, can lead to trouble as well. The excessive force we sometimes use when we're in a hurry and pick up the wrong tool or use a tool incorrectly also increases the risk of injury. Ergonomic injuries occur when your body's ligaments, tendons, muscles, nerves, or bones are subjected to stresses they can't adapt to. This can happen suddenly or gradually over time. The result can be conditions like carpal tunnel syndrome and tendonitis. You've probably heard of them. They're two of the most common conditions developed by office workers. Carpal tunnel occurs when repeating the same motion over and over inflames the muscles and ligaments in your wrist. They squeeze on the median nerve where it passes through the wrist into the hand. This causes numbness or a tingling sensation, sometimes even severe pain in your hands and fingers. Tendonitis can result from repetitive motion too. Pain from inflamed tendons commonly affects your hands, arms, shoulders, feet, or legs. Lower back pain is a common condition that is caused by working in awkward postures or without enough back support. Conditions like these are called Muscular Skeletal Disorders, or MSDs. And while they can be serious, they are also preventable. In fact, using ergonomic principles can make prevention easy. The top of your work desk may be familiar territory, but thinking about it ergonomically enables you to see it in a whole new way. You'll notice risks of injury that you may never have known existed, and you'll see how rearranging your desktop and changing how you use the tools on it can help you avoid those risks. Let's begin with a device that can literally be a pain in the neck, the telephone. When we're busy, we often cradle the phone's receiver between our head and shoulder so we can use our hands for something else. Unfortunately, that's a great way to strain your neck muscles. Use a hands-free telephone headset instead. That lets you get more done without creating a crick in your neck. How you organize the various tools and materials that you use is ergonomically important too. When the things you need are disorganized or scattered in various places around your office, you often have to make lots of long reaches to get at them. This overreaching can put you in awkward positions that cause chronic injuries like lower back pain. 
Additionally, when you reach to the side, across your body, or backwards, you can strain the delicate group of tendons that support your shoulder, known as the rotator cuff. To avoid these problems, organize the tools and materials that you use most often within easy reach, about 14 to 18 inches away. Position as many of them as possible right in front of you. This will prevent you from having to twist and turn if you're sitting. Just about anyone who's ever used a stapler has struggled to fasten more sheets of paper together than it can really handle. That's another good way to hurt yourself. Don't ever force any tool to do more than it was designed to. Using force increases the risk and potential severity of injury. The solution? Get a bigger stapler, a heavy-duty model intended for large jobs. Here's another example, trying to get a paper cutter to chop through more paper than it was designed for. What's your hurry? Instead of risking injury, make multiple cuts to smaller amounts of paper. Using the cutter as it was designed to work is easier and safer. You'll find it doesn't really take that much longer either. Now, let's extend our ergonomic examination to the rest of our workstation. To avoid awkward postures and the MSDs they cause, you need to set up your desk so you can maintain neutral positions while you're working. A neutral position is a comfortable working posture in which your joints are naturally aligned, which makes everything easier on your body. The first step in setting yourself up in neutral positions is to adjust the height of your chair. You need to align it properly with the height of your desk or other work surface. If your chair has no armrests, adjust it so that when you rest your forearms flat on the work surface, they form an angle between 90 and 120 degrees with your upper arms. If your chair has armrests, adjust its height so the armrests are on the same level as your work surface. This should force your elbows to form the 90 to 120 degree angle you're looking for. Your chair should also provide firm support for your lower back, hips and thighs. Your thighs should be roughly parallel to the floor, your knees at about the same height as your hips, and your feet placed slightly forward. To prevent strain on your spine, the back of your chair should fit firmly into the natural forward curve of your lower back. This is called lumbar support. If you need more lumbar support than the chair itself gives you, you can place a lumbar cushion behind your back or use a pillow or even a rolled up towel. The next step is to ensure solid support for your feet. If your feet are resting flat on the floor after you adjust your chair, you're all set. But if your feet are not flat on the floor, you'll need to get a foot rest and adjust it to fully support them. Dangling feet put a lot of stress on your spine, and that's a recipe for lower back pain. Next, you need to look at your computer. Let's start with the correct placement of your keyboard. It's crucial to preventing repetitive motion disorders like carpal tunnel syndrome and tendonitis. Position the keyboard so that your wrists are flat and your fingers rest comfortably on the home keys of A, S, D, and F on the left and J, K, L, and semicolon on the right. The important thing to remember here is to keep your wrists flat. You shouldn't have to bend them up or down. Many keyboards are adjustable to help you with this, but you may find you'll need to use a separate wrist pad, or you can use a rolled up towel if necessary. You may have to readjust the height of your chair slightly to get into this position, but it's worth it. This neutral positioning of your wrists relieves pressure on the median nerve where carpal tunnel syndrome begins. When you're keying, remember to keep your elbows close to your sides and type gently. Using too much force can be bad news at the keyboard as well. Place your mouse close to your keyboard within easy reach. When using the mouse, you can avoid repetitive motion problems by moving your whole arm instead of just your wrist. Now it's time to adjust your monitor. Having it at the wrong height or the wrong distance from you can cause eye strain and neck pain. Position it from 16 to 27 inches away from your eyes. 
and you should be looking down at it at a five to 20 degree angle. And here's a tip you'll appreciate when you're referring to other documents while you're using your computer. Always position a document at the same distance and height from you as your computer screen. That way you avoid the strain and fatigue of constantly moving your head up and down and refocusing your eyes. Maintaining these neutral positions should reduce physical stress and strain at your workstation. But this isn't the end of the story. Our bodies are engineered for movement. That's why it's a good idea to stir yourself up and stay limber during your workday. Even when you've arranged your workstation perfectly, sitting still for prolonged periods just isn't healthy. Limbering up gives your body a break from the physical burdens you're normally placing on it and reduces the uneven stresses that can lead to pain and injury. So change your position now and then. Make small adjustments to your chair or backrest, or stand up and take a walk. You can even do simple stretching exercises right at your desk. There are a number of low impact routines that are easy to do and focus on relaxing those trouble spots where tension and pain are likely to start. For instance, if you do a lot of keyboard work, this one's great for your fingers, hands and wrists. Periodically stop typing and ball your hands tightly into fists. Then relax them and spread out all your fingers, fully extending them. Do this five times for each hand. Then use one hand to gently push back on the fingers of the other hand. Hold this position for five seconds and repeat with the hands reversed. Here's an exercise for stiff neck muscles. Turn your head slowly from one side to the other. Hold each turn for three seconds. Repeat the cycle five to ten times. To stretch the muscles of your upper back and shoulders, hold your elbows at a 90 degree angle to your body. Then slowly push your elbows back as far as they will go and hold for five seconds. Do about five to ten repetitions. Or you can roll your shoulders in a wide circular motion. Rotate them forward five times, then backward five times. Repeat the cycle five to ten times. And here's relief for the tired muscles in your lower back. Begin by sitting up straight. Bend at your waist and lower your upper body slowly down to your knees. Hold this position for a few seconds, then sit back up. Take a deep breath and relax. Combining these limbering exercises with good workstation design can address many potential ergonomic problems but we can get even better results by looking a little further. Ergonomics is crucial to building a healthier and safer workplace for yourself. But the process doesn't begin and end with arranging things in your workplace and occasionally stretching out. We can enjoy even greater wellness on the job and off by living healthier and by taking better care of ourselves both physically and mentally. Consider the issue of workplace stress. It affects us on both mental and physical levels. Studies have shown that stress makes your muscles more tense which makes injury more likely. But you can fight back against stress with relaxation exercises that reduce both types of tension. An easy and effective one is deep breathing. Sit up straight and fold your hands loosely in your lap. Slowly take a deep breath through your nose, relaxing your abdominal muscles so your lungs can fill freely. Hold the breath for two seconds, then purse your lips and blow the breath gradually back out between them. Make a habit of doing deep breathing three or four times during a workday, perhaps after stretching, or whenever you feel stressed. To make your deep breathing even more effective, you can add a mental component to the exercise. It's called mind clearing. As you breathe, focus your thoughts on peaceful, relaxing images and let your stress evaporate. On the physical side, regular aerobic exercise will make you healthier and more resistant to illness and injury across the board. 
Whether you walk, jog, bike, play basketball, whatever you enjoy, work up a sweat and increase your heart rate for at least half an hour at a time, three to four times a week. You'll improve the health of your heart, lower your blood pressure, reduce your stress, and even build some muscle, all of which will help you avoid injuries. Eating healthier helps too. Well-balanced, low-fat, low-salt meals will make you feel better and lower your risk of injury. And get rid of those unhealthy lifestyle habits. Smoking, drinking, and using drugs all work against your mental and physical wellness and can make you more susceptible to injury. Your doctor and other healthcare advisors can guide you in developing a lifestyle that will make you less prone to any kind of illness or injury while making you feel better too. As we've seen, there are many ways you can use ergonomics to help you work better and safer. Let's review. When the things we use at work don't fit us well, it can put unnecessary strain on our bodies. Organizing the tools and materials on your desktop and using them correctly is key to avoiding ergonomic injuries. You can work more comfortably and more safely if you maintain neutral positions. Moving around during the workday and doing occasional stretching exercises can help to prevent strains and pain. Taking good care of yourself, both mentally and physically, can help to prevent workplace injuries as well. Even though one size doesn't fit all, ergonomics shows you how to arrange your workplace so that it does fit you and lets you work more comfortably, efficiently, and injury-free.